In this video, we're going to use the front panel to enter a simple serial echo routine. This will allow us to demonstrate serial communication to an external terminal, teletype, or other serial device. This will be the first time that we actually interface and use something outside of the Altair as part of one of our programs. All right, there is a listing of the programs we're going to do today on the website as support material. So if you came from the Altair clone website uh, where you found this video, take a look right below that link and you'll see a link for the support material uh, for the video. Now if you found us directly on YouTube, if you look below the video and expand on the description section, you will find a link to the support material, the listings there as well. And I'd recommend having those for this uh, demonstration today. All right, let's go ahead and fire up the computer. We'll do a hard reset. And now we're ready to enter the computer program. And we'll do that on the front panel. First byte is 333. And we'll de do deposit to put that into location zero. From here on out, we can do deposit next in order to go to the subsequent locations. Next byte is zero. Deposit next. Then we have 17 followed by 332. So 17, 332. 0 and 0, 333 and 1, 323 and 1, 303 and 0, and 1 more 0. All right, that's the whole program. Let's go back to location 0 and verify it. 333 and 0 should be in there. 333 and 0. 17 and 332. Looks good. 0 and 0. 333 and 1. Looks good. 323 and 1. 303 and 0. And one more 0. All right, we got that in. Looks like first try. All right, let's go ahead and single step through this program and watch what it's doing. Again, follow along on the listing. We'll start over at zero. What you'll find is that we execute an input instruction from port zero in order to see if there's any characters present. So here's the port number, here's the actual input operation. What we're going to look for is this last bit, D0, to go to a zero. When it's zero, that means that we have some data. But since it's one right now, that means there is no new data available. So the next instructions test that bit, and if it's not set, it jumps to location zero and we're back to the beginning. So this just goes round and round waiting for something to be in location one from, uh, excuse me, location zero uh, where the serial port status register is. All right, so let's go ahead and type a character. I'll type a zero. At that point, the characters come into this board and it should be there when we do an input operation on the status register. So here's our input from port zero. Here's the actual input operation going on, and now you see D0 has gone to zero. That tells us, yes, you do have a character now. So now it's going to test for that, and it's not going to execute the jump. So now it follows past the jump, and here we have another input in instruction, but instead of reading the status register at zero, it's going to read the data register at IO address one. So there's the input operation. This is actually the zero I typed. Now it's going to write that out to IO address 1. So here's an output instruction going to port 1. Here's the actual output operation taking place on port 1. You can see it shows up on the lower bytes and the upper bytes of the address. And then at that point it's just going to jump back to 0 and start all over. All right, let's take a look at the screen and see what happened. If you can look down there at the bottom, you see we got our 0. All right, I'm going to run the program full speed, and now if we type, everything we type comes back. So we can demonstrate that our serial interface is working, our cables are working, everything looks good. Now if you look back here at the computer while I type these things, let's see if you can notice any activity. Basically, you can't see anything happening on the front of the Altair. The reason is because the amount of time it takes to process each keystroke is so small that the lights that would show up just don't exist long enough for us to even notice them. All right, what we're going to do now is do the same basic thing but with interrupts. 
And rather than make you suffer through loading all that, we're going to do a video cut and get that loaded into memory. All right, we're back. We have entered the serial echo routine that uses interrupts for echo processing instead of simply pulling the um, status register. And we've got it all in memory, ready to go. So let's take a look and see how this works. We're going to single step through it. First thing we have to do is load a stack pointer, and it's going to load that with Octal 400 because interrupts are going to push things onto the stack. The next thing we're going to do is go ahead and enable interrupts in the serial board. Whenever it receives a character, let's enable those interrupts. All right, so it's moving a value into the accumulator, and now it's going to turn around and write that out to the status register, which is actually a configuration register when you do a write in the serial board. So at this point, the serial board is ready to interrupt us when it receives a character. The next thing we have to do is make sure that the 8080 processor is ready to uh, process interrupts. So this is the enable interrupt instruction. You'll see at that point, interrupts are now enabled. And at this point, we fall into the idle loop of our program. So here's a no op, no op, no op, and then it jumps back to address one zero. And then we repeat it. All right, so this just demonstrates some processing that might have been going on. As you notice, we're not pulling the status register at all. This is just uh, an idle loop doing basically nothing. And yet, it can still do echo because of interrupts. All right, so we'll just go ahead and stop right there on the type of zero. Let's see what happens. Okay, we've gone into an interrupt acknowledge cycle. It's an instruction fetch, not an input, interrupt acknowledge cycle. And at this point, we're doing a restart 7, which will jump to octal 70, or hexadecimal 38. If you'll notice on that listing, I've left some of the constants in hexadecimal now. Time to start getting used to that, because that became much more popular than octal about this time in history. All right, so here's the reset 7, or excuse me, restart 7 instruction that is going to enter the interrupt routine. First thing that happens, interrupts go off, and we're now pushing the return address onto the stack. So there is 377, 376, the two bytes of the return address. And now we're at octal 70. Now if you group in groups of four, you can see that would be a 38 in hexadecimal. So octal 70 is the same as 38 in hexadecimal. All right, so now it's executing our routine. The first thing the routine does is push the accumulator and the status flags onto the stack. It has to do that because the interrupt routine, uh, the routine that was interrupted, can't lose any information. All right, so here we see it writing to the next stack location, which is 375, 374, so that's the accumulator and the status flags. And now it's ready to actually do some processing. So what it's going to do here is do a port input from address 1, which is where the actual character we typed is. So here's the input. The character we typed was a 0. Now it's going to turn around and just do an out to port 1. Here's the output operation. It's going to port 1. Again, you can see the ports, by the way, on the lower and the upper address bytes. All right, and it's going to write that out the serial port. So at this instant, a 0 just popped up on my screen. I'll show you that in a minute. So that worked. The interrupt routine's all done. It's going to restore the accumulator and status flags from the stack. Here's popping from 374, 375. That gets the accumulator and status flags back. Now we have to re-enable interrupts so this can happen again. Interrupts are now re-enabled, and it does a return now, and you'll see it pop the return address off the stack, and now we're back into the middle of our loop, just single-stepping around. So we're back to 1-0, doing our three no-ops and the jump. Okay, so that did it. So let's go ahead and let that run full speed. Now we'll take a look over here at our terminal, and you see there's our zero in the bottom left that we typed, and now I can type... And you see it works just fine. All right, so let's take a look back here and see if we can see any of this activity happening. I'll start typing again. And again, it's so quick. It happens so quickly that you really can't see much of anything happening at all um, because the processing time is just so, so short. All right, let's do something interesting here. I'm going to go ahead and stop it. I'm going to take one of these no-ops. Um, so here's one of the no-ops and single step, there's another no op. I'm going to put in the halt instruction, which is a um, 166. Deposit that. All right, so that's the halt instruction. So now, when we do this, I'm going to go ahead and just run the program. We're in this nasty looking halt condition where it looks like nothing is working. But as you learned in the last video, the halt 
construction is meant to be used with interrupts. So our interrupts are enabled. Is it working? I can type and everything I'm typing is being echoed. Now looking at the Altair it doesn't look like anything's happening. What's happening is the halt is being interrupted. The interrupt routine is echoing the character. It jumps back into the, well actually it doesn't jump, it does a return back into the loop which then turns around and does another halt. So for the most part the computer stay in halted all the time until we echo a character using the interrupt routine. So let me put it over here so you can see that it really is working. Here's a bunch of the stuff I type, but here's some more. And again, we're just sitting over here halted, it looks like, but in reality, busy processing data. All right, well that's the end of this one. We can actually talk to an external device. Next thing we're going to do is learn about loading basic and get that up and running. Now the computer used in the demonstrations today is actually an Altair 8800 clone computer. This computer accurately duplicates the look and the feel, the features and performance and the limitations of the real Altair 8800, but it does it with modern hardware on the inside. This makes it more affordable and reliable than a vintage computer would be, and it also lets you experience this period in history hands-on without having to worry about damaging one of those collector's quality machines. It's just a great way to, to go through these fun exercises without having to worry about it and without paying a fortune. So be sure to visit AltairClone.com to learn more about this great computer.